So you've been thinking about buying a home, but you don't know if you qualify for a home loan. In this video, we're going to be going over every single factor that you should be aware of when trying to qualify for a home loan. These tips and tricks are going to help you get prepared that way when the time does come to buy your home, you're ready for it and it starts right now. Alrighty guys, so before we jump into the video, one thing I do want to mention is that these are going to serve more as a baseline on where you should be. It doesn't mean that if you are outside of these parameters, you won't qualify for a home loan. The whole purpose of this video is to try and prepare you to get you as close as possible to being pre-qualified before you go and reach out to the lender. Okay, so let's talk about credit scores for a second. So with your credit score, you definitely want to be somewhere in the ballpark of 580 all the way up to 640 or higher. Now, this is going to vary based off the type of loan you go for, but typically what I see is, you know, 580 to 640 is getting approved. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're below 580 that you won't qualify. It simply means that your chances of qualifying are less likely. And even if you do get qualified at 580 or below, you are going to have a higher interest rate as a result of that. So one thing I would definitely recommend is if you know your credit scores are low because you're using Credit Karma or maybe one of your credit card applications that tells you your credit score, I would definitely recommend that you reach out to a credit repair specialist. That way you can start working on your credit score now because this is a process that sometimes can take several months in order to bring your scores up to where they should be. So. The last thing you want to do is wait till last minute and then try and raise your score by 50 points, you know, within a matter of weeks. It more than likely isn't going to happen. So I highly recommend that you raise your scores now and try to avoid anything that is going to impact your credit in a negative way. So moving on to income and DTI. So DTI stands for debt to income ratio. So essentially what that is, is basically a percentage that the bank is going to look at in order for them to determine whether or not you qualify for a loan. Usually they like to see this ratio between 40 and 50 percent and this is going to vary based off the type of loan you have and your credit score. How do you find out your DTI ratio? Well, what you're going to want to do is add up all of your total monthly expenses and divide that number by your total gross income that is before taxes. So once you divide that number, you are going to go ahead and get a result, which is going to be in a percentage form. So let's say you have, you know, $2,000 in monthly gross income and you have, after you add up all of your expenses, you know, your rent, your car payment, your insurance and everything else you have going on, let's say that totals up to a thousand dollars. Well, when you divide a thousand by 2000, that is going to give you a 0.5 or a 50% debt to income ratio. So a general rule of thumb for your debt to income ratio is the lower, the better, right? If you are right around 40 to 50%, you still have a good chance of qualifying anything above that. I mean, you are running into the risk of not qualifying, but the lower, the better, right? Because the lower your de your DTI, the less risky you are going to be in the lender's eyes, basically increasing your chances of getting pre-qualified. Moving on to the last thing we'll talk about in this video is going to be your work history. Typically lenders like to see two or more years in the same field. So this means that you can, you could have switched from company to company, but as long as you were doing the same thing or in the same field, you shouldn't have any trouble qualifying except if you were, let's say you were a W2 employee for one year and then the following year you decided to go, you know, start a business, you went 1099, you were self-employed an independent contractor or whatever it may be that actually wouldn't qualify at least with the lenders that i've spoken to because you're basically not in the same field anymore right you're going from an employee who maybe had um uh how would you say a dependable salary to maybe an independent contractor who now your salary is based upon sales or commissions so that would kind of be one of the things that would be a red flag in the lender's eyes but i would if you have any deeper questions into hey, you know, I'm W2 and I want to go 1099 or vice versa, definitely reach out to a local lender to have them go more into detail. These again are just as a general baseline. Alrighty guys, so that is going to be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it brings you one step closer to getting into your dream home. And I would highly recommend that you go through this list and kind of self-evaluate yourself to understand where you are and help you get to where you need to be. This way, when you do decide to move forward with your home purchase, you are all the more prepared for it. If you like the video, please drop a like down below. It really helps me out a ton and actually spread this message out to more people who maybe are wondering whether they qualify or not. 
And if you want to stay up to date with helpful tips based around how to buy, sell, and invest in real estate, I would highly recommend that you consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind if you decide to later. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.